Hello. Today we're putting this trunk on my Ashley Miata. Ashley has a Mazda Speed. You can see it kind of used to say, used to say Mazda Speed on it. But yeah, it has this Mazda Speed trunk and it's really nice because it's extended. And I'm keeping it. I'd rather have this trunk. So let's get on and take it off. Two nuts here, two nuts there. And gotta undo the wiring. Here's the difference. Mazda Speed's a little extended. And this one is just a little chubbier. It goes out a little more, just wider. This one's skinnier. They're both cool. I just like that one better. The one has the cool center brake lights. That just has the normal one. Now we swap the trunk on. There you go. And I'm doing this by myself, by the way. Nobody's helping me. And it's not too bad. And there you go. OEM spoiler is on. And to me, it looks kind of funny. I'm used to the Mars just be looking a little better. But not bad. It definitely has a funny look. Yeah, it looks better in this angle. Okay, so first thing first, loosen the wheels and jack her up. Jacked up, wheels off. We have my sway bar end links. These are moved, they're really thick. This is literally an OEM upgrade. It even has grease fitting, so you can put more grease in them. Let's get to it. I still got filming, but uh, put them in. It's very easy and I think it's easy because there's no sway bar end link on the other side. So the other side, I'm going to film it. This one was really easy. All I had to do was literally just adjust the sway bar down. Popped it in. Now the other one might be a little trickier. Let's clean under here. Take the nuts off. And let's try to put it in place. And now let's see if I can somehow pop it in. Top one is in. And bottom one, bottom one might be tricky. There you go. All right, I got the bottom one in. And the top, top won't really go in. So I have an idea to jack it up. All right, I got my other jack. I'm going to put it on the control one. Jack it up a little bit. It's tricky, man. This is tricky. There you go, popped in. Now I'm gonna try to tighten it. It's easier to have a little impact wrench or impact gun. Here's what I have right here. And it's gonna make my life a lot easier because without it, it'll probably get snagged or stuck. Right, right now, put on the nuts. First you do it by hand. If you impact it, you could possibly cross thread them and that wouldn't be fun. Now I'm doing the bottom one. This might work or it might not. I'm going to see if I can just tighten it real quick with the impact driver. Nope, it moved. For my case, I'm using an 18. So Moog has two sides. Luckily, you don't have to put an Allen key in it. Normally, you have to put an Allen key in the center and use a wrench. That usually sucks. In my case, I can put a wrench in the inner and then use the socket. The nut is a 15. Inner of the tie rod is an 18. So let's tighten it. Socket is in. I put the wrench. And it's tight. Wrench is a little stuck. And it's free. Okay, now let's do the top part. All right, I think I got the wrench in. Let's see if I can tighten it. I don't think it tightened all the way. Let's lower it and see what happens. If you don't tighten it all the way and you turn, you'll hear a little clunk sound. We don't want that. Go. And now, the damn thing is stuck. <laughs> Alright, well, time to get it out somehow. There you go. Sway bar end link is on. Stiff. Hell yeah. Alright, now we can start putting it all back together. Way bar end links are installed. Now I'm gonna go for a little test drive and see how it feels. And last thing we're doing today, we're doing a valve cover gasket. So I've done one before. Well, I've done I've done multiple before actually, and it's not too bad. So you have to do a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts, undo the PCV. So let's get to work. So first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna loosen all these 10 millimeter bolts. I wish I had a cameraman with me, but. 
They're all basically loose now. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is take off the coil packs. You just wanna take off the bolts and then just pull out the spark plugs. You're not supposed to pull it by the wire, but I'm about to. Oh man, this thing is on there. It's probably never been removed. Oh, gotta love when that happens. So this plug won't get undone, but in the meantime, we can get all these others out. I'm gonna leave them in a pattern that I could remember. And this one, I fixed it. I just popped it all back together and it came off. And we're gonna put it on the side here. Since it's being a pain. Look at this, there's like duct tape on the spark plug. Weird, but that's out. Now let's take off all the bolts. All the lab cover bolts are off. Put them on this cardboard so I can remember how they are. They are pretty much all the same, but I am gonna paint them like I did a few years ago with Martha. Next is I'm doing vacuum lines and I'm plugging the rest. So I just run the vacuum line here. This VVTI stalling node, you have to lift it up, get it free. I undid these two, so now it's like I just have all that room to play. I undo the coal pack harness, just put it on the side. I left mine still plugged in because I don't want to risk breaking this. But okay, and now valve cover should be loose, ready to go. Oh yeah, make sure you undo your PCV. I just undid it like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this rail, this oil rail out of the way and just pop this all off. You probably can't see shit, but here, this is me pulling out my valve cover by myself. And so far, I literally have only like 20 minutes into this. It's not too bad. Oh, there's another little bracket I have to undo. Right now, I'm pulling out the VVTI solenoid, get it out of the way. And now the valve cover pops off. Oh, I'm covered in oil. I will admit, doing this alone sucks. But, it's out. Got the valve cover. What was a pain is that oil rail. I'll show you in a second. This oil rail was in the way and was annoying. But dude, it looks beautiful here. Holy smokes. This was a very well taken care of engine. Wow. Look at that. I'm gonna wire brush these bolts, make them smooth and nice, and paint them with some incredible heat paint. So, before, dude, these are gonna come out so good. I just gotta hopefully remember where they go. But okay, that's done. So what I'm gonna do right now is Take off the old valve cover, put the new one in. Kinda satisfying. Remember how the old one went? Now the new one goes in. Make sure you put on the gasket first because if you paint it, it is going to be a nightmare to put the gasket in. Right now, see, the valve cover is ugly and disgusting. It's upside down, and I don't care. But if I had if I had just painted it and I had it upside down like this, I would have anxiety because the paint would probably be ruined. Look at that. Pop it in by hand. Pretty fun. Here for the spark plugs. That little ring. You got to pop it in. It's really simple. It's not rocket science. Pops right in. Nice. Something you're supposed to do, you want to get your gas heat maker. You want to get one that is oil resistance. I got this one. You want to put on all the 90s, like the little sharp points. So there, there. You know, good. Very likely it'll leak from there. Next step is to clean this. See all these like barnacles and stuff? Well, get the greaser or brake cleaner and get this thing clean. Let's get to work. What you want to do now is I'm going to heat up the valve cover. Cleaned it up a good amount. There's no more like big barnacles or anything. It's getting cold out here in the northeast. So I'm going to warm it up. Warm up the paint. What I'm using is engine paint. 
I'm gonna use this as a primer. So I'm gonna put it on first. And once I put that on, I'm gonna paint it the color I want. I'm using this because this is way better in primer. This will literally stick onto this and it won't come off. So using this for a primer and then I'm gonna paint it a color. There you go, valve cover's painted. Well, it's primer. Looks pretty freaking cool. Now I'm gonna clean this thing up. And now I'm gonna paint it the color. Let's see if it still works. Oh God. Yeah, the paint seems to be fine. All right, let's get to work. The good thing about painting it black, if you mess a few spots, it won't be too noticeable. Right now, it looks like a cool gunmetal. Man, this is so good. Wow. For being a rattle can job, I like it. This came out so damn good. Oh my God. And yes, it has beautiful flakes on it. All right, I'm very happy with it. It's literally like a gunmetal look. That's literally what I was aiming for. I love it. Oh, and something else you wanna do, you wanna cover up wherever oil would go through. Wherever there would be like a gasket or something, I covered up. But woo, that's beautiful. But okay, now that the valve cover is painted, looking beautiful, now I can start doing the valve cover gasket. I can put the silicone on it. I can go like that and put it in. I'm glad I did it now because if I had to put the gasket on right now, it would be a nightmare. Let's put silicone on all the 90s and then install it. Okay, boys and girls, here it is. <laughs> I think it came out a little too good. I am in love with it. And this literally took me less than two hours. This is fucking sick. Okay, now reverse process and put everything back together. Here's the valve cover. I haven't tightened down everything. I put everything in place, but my goodness, this thing is gorgeous. Okay, tomorrow I'm gonna film it more so you can see it more in the sunlight. And you can really see everything else now that it, you can see everything else that's dirty. But, oh well, tomorrow you'll see it better. Couple days later, here's the painted valve cover. But yeah, in this video, we got a lot done. Did the valve cover gasket, new sway bar end links, and we swapped in the original trunk. Enjoy the edit.